What's up guys, my name is ESO and I am obsessed with creating the most effective builds. This particular build guide is based on melee combat and it's really fun to play. If you play this build it will make you unstoppable early in the game and it also builds into a lot of other high level builds I've got coming out in the future which I'll link in the description below. Now before we actually go over this build I just want to show you how it plays. If you missed my Fallout 76 livestream last night, where I was killing other players in 4v1 fights repeatedly, then please go ahead and check it out. I believe that video showcases how overpowered this build actually is. Come on, come at me. Oh, the throwing knife! Oh, it went through her! Execution. Oh, wait, wait, who's that? Oh, mate, you're coming at me. Come on, come on. Look, you ready? You ready? He's gonna... He's stimpacking, he's stimpacking. Get Rex on. I just do too much damage. This is overpowered. Even when I came up against a level 40 player, I could still defeat him on my own. And of course, it works really well when killing monsters as well if you're not interested in PvP. But you're probably wondering, well ESO, why is melee so good? Well, excluding the explosive and throwing weapons, which this build actually also uses, Melee is the most powerful damage output in the game and it doesn't really require much skill to actually hit your opponent because as long as you're close enough you actually always have a 95% chance to hit them in bats which to be honest with you is very overpowered. Also when you attack somebody in vats your character will lunge forward closing the distance in between you and hit them every single time. What I'm going to do now guys is I'm going to go over your character's special stats and the perk cards that you're going to need for this build. After that I'll then talk about the best armor and weapons to get and then finally we'll go over the mechanics that you guys can take advantage of to beat other players even if they're using this same build. Now I do have a lot of future builds coming out for Fallout 76 so if you are interested make sure you subscribe and press the bell icon as well and then YouTube will let you know whenever I release future videos on this game. But starting out we've just left Fallout 76 and you get your first perk card pack. This will always include the Gladiator perk card which makes your one handed weapons do plus 10% damage. Awesome! For the next three levels you're going to want to invest all of your special stats into strength and also into the Gladiator perk card. As you can see, the card has three stars. Once you get it to max rank, you will do an additional 20% more damage with one-handed melee weapons. Early on in the game, it's important to maximize the amount of damage we do so we can kill things quickly and level up faster. Also, with your really high strength, you can actually carry around more scrap to break down for more experience, and then the scrap can be used to repair your weapons. Now because of the way Fallout 76 actually works, each time you level up you're going to get a fixed set of perk cards until you reach level 10. Then you'll start getting random perk cards from each perk card pack every time you level up. At level 6 you're going to get the Slugger perk card. This increases the damage you do with two-handed melee weapons by 10%. Now two-handed melee weapons are actually much better than one-handed melee weapons, as I'll explain later on in the video. So from now on, whenever you find the Slugger perk card, invest it into this and just get rid of the Gladiator perk card for now. Now make sure that you keep your strength at free until you finish the rest of this build guide video, because increasing your strength by one only increases your melee damage by one damage. There are far more effective things that you're going to want to invest in early on in the game. Don't just put everything into strength. Instead, a more effective way to do this is to just get power armor, which gives you 10 strength automatically at the very start of the game, and obviously that's super efficient. And I'll leave a guide on where you can find power armor down below in the description. But next, let's talk about charisma. Once your character reaches level 4, you should invest 1 point into Charisma and get the Lone Wanderer perk card, which is insanely powerful. When adventuring alone, it makes you take 10% less damage and you also gain 10% faster action point regeneration. At the max rank of 3, it reduces incoming damage by 20% and it increases AP regeneration 
by 30%. Now action point regeneration is of course really useful in melee as we are constantly sprinting and using vats for the lunge attack to close the distance between us and our enemy. But obviously bear in mind that the lone wanderer perk only works when you're adventuring alone and usually adventuring alone is the best way to get pvp action because most players don't want to fight a big group unless you're me and you're just a crazy psychopath who takes on everybody but if you are not adventuring alone charisma is still one of the most useful stats in the whole game especially for player versus player for example we have the medic perk card and at max rank 3 it will make your stim packs also heal your teammates at the same time so imagine that if all four of you have this on your team you can very easily keep your whole team alive because every single time one of you takes a stim pack everybody gets healed for the same amount it's actually in my opinion the most abusable and broken perk card in the game if you know what you're doing but the alternative low level option however is to invest in the bodyguard perk which gives you an additional 6 energy and damage resistance up to a total of 18 for each teammate that you have in your party. At max rank this will give you an additional 36 damage and energy resistance but again I think the medic perk is much better or obviously the lone wanderer perk if you are on your own. The next stat we want to invest in is agility. For every one point of agility you have, you will get 10 more action points to use in vats and also for sprinting and lunging. Action points are insanely powerful with melee builds, as I'm going to show you later. Agility also has some of the better perk cards in the entire game, especially later on as you advance in level. Now we will want to get the action boy perk card because this makes your action points regenerate 15% faster and at max rank a whole 45% faster which is really good for sprinting, exploring and weapon attacks in vats. So max it out as soon as possible. In addition we also have the lone wanderer perk card as well so we actually have a total action point regeneration speed of 65% which is huge. Because if you watch my PvP gameplay you will know that VATS is key to a lot of the unique mechanics and special moves you can do in melee. So next, let's talk about perception. This is pretty much useless to you as you always have a 95% chance to hit in VATS anyway, so long as you're in melee range. Also, all the perk cards here aren't going to be useful to us, especially early on on a damage based melee build. I suggest instead going for the green thumb perk card, which you unlock at level 4 because that allows you to get twice as many ingredients when harvesting plants. And plants are used for crafting food and chems, which are very important for doing even more damage and buffing your character's action points regeneration and damage resistance. I'll make a whole video talking more in detail about chems and I'll link it below in the description when it's done guys. Make sure you subscribe for that if you haven't already. Next though we have endurance. Now you may be wondering, why do we only have one endurance right now? Well, to be honest, you actually start the game at 250 health and you only get 5 extra health per 1 point of endurance you invest. So it's not really worth it at a low level. The max rank you can get is 15 endurance which gives you 320 health. As for the perk cards, below level 10, they're really just not that useful to you in helping with damage or survivability. I personally found though that the lead belly perk was quite useful because it just reduces the amount of radiation you take from eating and drinking by 30%, so you just have a bigger health bar. After level 10 though, you're going to want to get the Life Giver perk card, which gives you plus 20% of your current max health at max rank, meaning, meaning you get an extra 50 health. Or at 14 endurance, you would have an extra 64 health. Next up, we have the Intelligence stat. Eventually guys, you will unlock the Makeshift Warrior perk card at level 9. This is what you need for crafting awesome tier 5 melee weapons later in the game, so it's really important. But since you can respec your character whenever you like for crafting, you don't actually need to worry about it right now. Or better yet, you could just ask your friend with a high intelligence skill to do it for you. For now though, I highly suggest getting free intelligence and maxing out the first aid perk card as it makes stim packs regenerate 45% more health. This is obviously invaluable in PvP and, and PvE. In fact, you're just at a huge disadvantage if you do not use this perk card. 
Personally, I also found the demolition perk unlocked at level 10 to be very useful as well. The extra 20% explosive damage makes you hit like a truck. Lastly, we have our luck perk. At level 5, you're going to unlock the serendipity perk card. Now, while below 30% health, you'll actually gain a 15% chance to avoid all damage, which is insanely useful, but obviously only if you get lucky. At max rank though, it will give you a 45% chance to avoid damage, which is pretty useful, but again, it's better at later levels when you have more health. Now the luck stack will affect how quickly you can gain critical hits in Fallout 76, so it will be useful later on for one hit killing other players. Now we've covered all of our starting stats and you should have a finished level 10 character that looks like this. The perfect thing about this build is that it's a solid foundation for you to go any way with it. If you want to continue leveling from here, I would suggest investing into the strength stat and also finding the expert and master slugger perk cards, which will allow you to get a total of 60% more melee damage once you max them out at 9 strength. Okay, so that's it for our stats. Now let's talk about armor and weapons. I actually suggest crafting your own armor whenever you can. And you can also collect legendary pieces from the different events in the game. But if you want to be even more overpowered, I suggest watching my guide below on finding power armor. You can get it at the start of the game. Now the power armor frame alone will automatically set your physical and energy resistance to 60, which is absolutely massive for low level players giving you better resistances to radiation and damage than you can get with crafting. But most importantly, while you're in power armor, it will actually set your strength to 10, which is just such an advantage. For every one point of strength that you have, you gain five additional carry weight and another and another one damage with melee weapons. So at 10 strength, you'll have an extra carry weight of 50 and an extra 10 damage in melee against other players. Now with the addition of the maxed out slugger or gladiator perk, you'll actually be getting 13 extra damage. Fusion cores actually take a lot longer to drain than in previous Fallout games now, so you can run about in power armor for a lot longer. You can also carry it around in your inventory and it only weighs 10 weight, which is literally nothing, because you can take it out and put it on whenever you feel like or whenever you want to do some PvP. You can also still sprint into your enemies and knock them down, which is super useful for a melee build. As for your melee weapon, the best weapon you can get in the game is firstly a machete at level 1, which is a one-handed weapon and it has a base damage of 23 and a medium attack speed. And secondly, once you have the slugger perk card, which increases your damage with two-handed weapons, I suggest swapping to the fire axe. You can find a fire axe easily off one of the enemy scorchers. The fire axe has a base damage of 43 and has a slow attack speed, but it's so effective in PvP and PvE. It's literally the best melee weapon you can get in between levels 5 and 15. Don't worry about its slow attack speed guys, in my testing I found that slower harder hitting weapons were the most effective at killing players and monsters, because I could just attack them, dealing a lot of damage, and then immediately block to deflect oncoming blows. And then I would just do the same again. Each one of my hits that connected would absolutely decimate the other player. This was much easier than trying to use a dagger, but I would constantly get hit in between attacks. So my overall damage per second would be a lot lower. So the more damage a weapon does, the better basically. Lastly, we have the throwing weapons. Oh my god, these are so fun. At the start of the game, you can actually craft 5 throwing daggers at a weapon workbench for 15 steel. It's extremely cheap to craft, but get this, for some reason, they do 75 damage per hit. You pretty much never have to reload, you can just constantly throw them at people, which, which makes throwing weapons one of the best damage weapons in the entire game, excluding explosives. It does take a little bit of practice to get used to, but once you get it down, the amount of damage they do is just unreal. They also hit from quite a distance if you're a good shot, but they do less damage beyond 12 meters. I want to kill you with a frying knife. Oh, yes! Oh, man, please. Now let's talk about the mechanics section of the build, a guide to winning PvP combat. Firstly, make sure you drink alcohol and make use of chems like Psycho to increase your damage further during battles. The only foes you're really going to have trouble with in PvP is other players trying to melee you. Trying to use my own powers against me? 
I personally find the best way to handle other melee players is to dodge around backwards and forwards, strafing to the left and right, and if you can, try and get behind a wall or some terrain and carry on circling them until they try and attack you. When they attack, the easiest thing to do is back off so they miss and then rush them with a VATS attack in response. Alternatively, you can also block their attack. This makes the enemy flinch and gives you time to engage them with a free hit. It's very important that you balance your VATS regeneration so you always have some action points to spare during the battle. This will allow you to run away behind cover to quickly heal yourself, or run someone down and finish them off. One very cool trick that you can use with VATS is done by targeting the enemy. And then as you attack, direct your character to the side of your opponent, and you'll basically swing around behind them very quickly while also hitting them 95% of the time. It kind of works like a dodge because it confuses the other player when you rapidly move behind them, and then you can just start beating the crap out of them as they flee in terror. Now the great thing about this high damage melee build is that the other player cannot actually use stim packs against it. The regeneration is just too slow. In free hits, most foes are already dead before they get a chance to do anything. Another way to deal with melee opponents is using throwing knives when they're running directly at you. It literally destroys them and as soon as they get hit, they flinch and then you can hit them with an axe. Now in order to truly test this build in my time playing with other players, I didn't actually use power armor. And I would still win most fights and I could still take on four people at the same time. And it was just because of my obscene damage output from that fire axe and the throwing weapons I was using. So there you have it, my super long beginner friendly Fallout 76 melee build guide. I hope it helped you guys out and if you're interested in my upcoming stealthy sniper build or my gunslinger build, I'm also doing a lot of PvP tutorials and other cool tips and tricks that you guys will definitely find helpful. And of course, I'll link everything down below in the description. But if any of that interests you guys, make sure you subscribe and press that little bell icon as well. And then YouTube will let you know as soon as those videos are out. You can follow me on Twitter so you know when I'm live streaming. And there you can ask me any questions or chat to me about my Fallout builds. But thanks very much for watching me, ESO, and I will see you on the killing field. Goodbye, guys, and have a fantastic day.